myself Ashok B. Bagra from Dr. Subhash Technical Campus and in today's lecture we are going to solve one example from the balancing of rotating masses. So in a previous lecture we have discussed about balancing of several masses rotating in a different plane. So in this theory we have seen there is a basic five steps to solve any example, any example from the balancing of rotating masses. So we know that first step is a plane position. So you have to draw a plane position according to the given data. Second step is an angular position. So you have to locate all the masses as per given data in a position, angular in an angular position. Third step, you have to calculate the data regarding forces and couple. And next step. So we have to draw a force polygon, either force polygon or a couple polygon according to the demand. Okay. And similarly, step 5 it is also you we have to draw either force polygon or a couple polygon according to the our need. Okay. So in today's lecture, we are going to discuss, we are going to solve an example based on balancing of rotating masses based on balancing of rotating masses in a different way. So let us see one example. So here the example is given. So a rotating shaft carries four unbalanced masses M1, M2, M3 and M4 of magnitudes of 20 kg, 15 kg, 17 kg, 14 kg revolving at a radius of 60 mm 80 mm, 100 mm and 60 mm respectively. The masses, the masses M2, M3 and M4 revolves in a plane 100 mm, 180 mm and 300 mm respectively from the plane of mass M1. And the angular and they are angularly located at 65 degree, 40, 145 degree, 270 degree respectively measured in the anti-clockwise direction from the mass M1 looking from the mass end of shaft. Okay. The shaft is to be dynamically balanced. The shaft is to be dynamically balanced by two masses. By two masses, both located at 70 mm radiuses and revolving in a midway between those of masses M1 and M2. And the midway between those of masses M3 and M4 determine magnitude and angular positions of balancing masses. So, my dear friends, we can determine this magnitude and angular position of these two balancing masses by two methods. We know that first method is a graphical method, and second method is an analytical method. So, first let us see a graphical method. Okay, so here given data. A rotating shaft carries four unbalanced masses. So, given data, the, the magnitude of four masses is given. M1 is 20 kg, M2 is 15 kg, M3 is 17 kg, and M4 is given 14 kg. Okay. Similarly, they are rotating, revolving at a radius of 60 mm, 80 mm, 100 mm, and 60 mm respectively. That means R1, R2, R3, and R4 is also given. Okay, the masses M2, M3 and M4 revolves in a plane 100 mm, 180 mm, 300 mm respectively from the planes of mass M1 and having angularly located, that means the angular position of these masses are given. So we can say that theta 1, theta 2, theta 3 and theta 4 is also given. Then this balancing, so we balance this system by using two masses. Okay, one is MB1 and second one is MB, MB2. So MB1 and MB2 are rotating at a radius of RB1 and RB2. It is also given 70 mm radius. Okay, so they are rotating at 70 mm radius. Okay, so let us consider MB1, it is a balancing mass 1, and MB2 it is a balancing mass 2. Okay, so we have discussed there is a total 5 steps. Okay, by considering this, this 5 step, we can determine our balancing mass and its angular position. So first step it is a plane position. So this is a first step plane position. So here 
the mass is m2 m3 and m4 revolves in the planes 100 mm 180 mm and 300 mm respectively from the plane of mass m1 that means the mass is m2 the plane of mass is m2 m3 and m4 are at 100 mm 180 mm and 300 mm respectively from the mass plane of mass m1 so first of all we draw this is our shaft okay so we locate the position of mass m1 so let us consider the mass m1 is rotating in a plane so this is a mass it is a plane of mass m1 okay now the mass m2 it is rotating in another plane let us consider it is b plane but the distance between a and b is given 100 mm because the mass is m2 m3 and m4 revolves in the planes 100 mm 180 mm 300 mm respectively from the plane of mass m1 so the distance of mass plane of mass m2 plane of mass m3 and plane of mass m4 is given from the plane of mass a m1 okay so we have located the m1 mass in a plane so the m2 mass it is rotating in b plane and distance between a and b plane is given 100 mm okay the m3 mass is rotating in c plane we consider the m3 mass is rotating in a c plane and the distance between a and c is given 180 mm similarly the m4 mass is rotating in a d plane and the distance between a plane and d plane is given 300 mm okay then here the shaft is to be dynamically balanced by two masses both located at 70 mm radiuses and revolving in a midway between those of masses m1 and m2 that means here we have to balance this system by using two masses first one is mb1 and second one is mb2 okay so we have to put the mb1 mass in a plane that means in a plane and this plane is at midway between mass m1 and m2 so here we have considered one air plane and in an air plane we add an mb1 mass at rb1 radius okay and the, this is l plane similarly the midway between those masses of m3 and m4 so in the plane of mass m3 and mass m4 there is another plane is m plane and in, in this m plane we consider mb2 mass is rotating okay so this is our plane position so we have arranged a position of plane according to the v1 data okay now angular position now angular position okay so here angular position is given angularly located the masses m1 m2 m3 and m4 are angularly located at 65 degree 145 degree 270 degree respectively measured in anti clockwise direction from the mass m1 from the mass m1 so here the all angular position angular positions of all masses that means m2 m3 and m4 is given from the angular position of mass m1 so first of all let us consider the mass m1 is located at 0 degree okay so this is a 0 degree we consider and we can say that it is ox so if we assume mass m1 the initial position of mass m1 is at 0 degree in anti clockwise direction that means it is mass m1 is at 0 degree so we know that the angular position if we see from the this end if we see from mass m okay in anti clockwise direction sorry if we see from this end from the mass a m then in anti clockwise direction the angular position is given so mass 65 degree, 145 degree and 270 degree respectively measure in anti-clockwise direction from the mass M1. Okay, so we have to put the mass M2, M3 and M4 in anti-clockwise direction, in anti-clockwise direction from the mass M1. So here, so this is a, from the mass M1, we put M2 mass at 65 degree. Similarly, from the mass M1, we put M3 mass at 145 degree. And similarly, we have put M4 mass at 270 degree. So, here, this is 270 degree, this is 145 degree, and this is 65 degree. So, this is the angular position. So, we have completed two steps. First is the plane position. So, we have to draw, we have to arrange masses in a plane according to the given data. In the second step, we have to locate the masses according to the given angular position.
Now third step. Contains forces and proper. So as shown in figure, we have plane position. There are six plane A, L, B, C, M, and D. So there are six plane. So we calculate the forces and couple in a system. Okay, so in a first column of table, we consider plane. Okay, so from the plane position, we can see that there are six plane A, L, B, C, M, and D. So here we put all the planes. Second, in the second column, we consider masses. Okay, the masses symbol is M. It is denoted as small m, and unit is kg. So mass in a plane A, the mass M1 is rotating. So M1 mass, the magnitude of M1 is 20 kg. The magnitude of M2 is 15 kg. Magnitude of M3 is 17 kg. Magnitude of M4 is 14 kg. And in a L and M plane, the MB1 and MB2 masses are rotating. But the MB1 and MB2 are unknown. So here we consider MB1 and MB2. Now third column. In the third column, we consider radius of rotation. So that means R1, R2, R3, R4, and R B1, R B2. So radius is we consider it is denoted as small r and we consider in a meter. Okay, so the R1 is a 60 mm. R1 is a 60 mm is given. So we convert in meter, so it is a 0 0.06 meter. Okay, R B1, R B1 is also given, 0, it is 70 mm. So R B1 is 0 0.07 meter. R2 is 80 mm, so we consider 0 0.08 meter. R3 is 100 mm, okay, so we consider it is a 0.1 meter. M RB2 it is 0 0.07 meter. Similarly, R4 is given 60 mm, so that's why we have written 0 0.06 meter. Okay, so this is third column. Now fourth column, it is a distance from RP. So here distance from RP, so RP is a reference plane. So there are six planes A, L, B, C, M, D. So out of this six plane, we have to consider any one plane as a reference plane. So let us consider. So how to select? How we can select reference plane? So you have to select a reference plane, a plane having some unknown. So we know that in a L plane and M plane, the mass MB1 and MB2 are unknown. So we consider reference plane from L or M plane. So let us consider this L plane is a reference plane. So here we write RP. So our L plane is a reference plane. So towards the right direction, we have to consider positive distances and from the L plane towards the left direction, we have to consider negative distances. Okay. So now fourth column is a distance from RP. It is denoted as small L and unit is a meter. So we consider a distance from reference plane in a meter. Okay, so first, the first plane is A plane. Now we know that the A plane it is at a distance. So this AB is 100 mm. So AL, so L plane is in a midway between A and B plane. So L plane is at 50 mm from the A plane. So it is clear. So this distance is 50 mm. So that means 0 0.05 meter. But the A plane is located in a towards the left direction from the L plane. So we have to consider here minus 0 0.05 meter. Okay, second, the distance of L plane from reference plane. So here we consider this is our reference plane. L is a reference plane. Now what the distance of L plane from the L plane it is zero. Okay, so here we consider a zero. Third plan is B plan. So B plan, we know that this distance is AB is 100 mm. So AB it is also 50 mm. But this 50 mm is towards the right direction. So here we consider 0 0.05 meter. Okay, 0 0.05 meter, but in a positive positive direction. So plus 0 0.05 meter. Then C plan. So this is a C plan. So distance of C plane from a L plane. So we know that this distance is, we know that this distance, this is 180 mm, this is 100 mm, so we know that this distance become 80 mm, this distance become 80 mm. 
So we know that the LB is 50 mm and BC is 80 mm. So LC become 130 mm. Okay, and 130 mm is nothing but it is 0 0.0, 0 0.13 meter. 130 mm means 0 0.13 meter. Okay, and next it is M length. M length. Now we know that this total distance AD is 300 mm and this AC is 1 mm. So this distance become 120 mm. So CM and MD both are equal become 60 mm. So this distance is 60 mm. Okay, so we know that LC is 130 plus 60 then it will become 190. So LM, the distance between L plane and M plane is become 190 mm. And 190 mm is 0 0.19 meter. Then last one is the B plane. So we know that the total distance is 300 mm and out of this 300 mm, AL is 50 mm. So if we subtract AL from AD, then it will be uh, LD. So it is 250. Okay, it is 250. So here we have written 0 0.25. Okay, so now next column is the centrifugal force. So in a centrifugal force, we consider the centrifugal force, the general equation of centrifugal force, we know that is M omega square r. The general equation of centrifugal force, Fc is equal to M omega square r. But for an easy calculation, we consider M r. Okay. For the, to simplify the calculation, we consider centrifugal force in M r. So here, the centrifugal force divided by omega square. So M r is a notation for centrifugal force and unit is kg into meter. Now, we know that it is, it is nothing but centrifugal force is multiplication of mass and radius. So here, the mass is 20 kg, the radius is 0 0.06 meter. So if you multiply these two values, then 20 into 0 0.06, that means 1.2 meter, 1.2 kg into meter. Similarly, it is MD1 and this is 0 0.07 meter. So here centrifugal force becomes 0 0.07 MD1. Similarly, it is 15 meter, it is 15 kg and the radius is 0 0.08 so 15 into 0 0.08 is become 1.2 kg into meter similarly it is 17 kg and this is 0 0.1 so it will become 1.7 similarly it is mv2 and radius is 0 0.07 so 0 0.07 mv2 it is 14 kg and it is 0 0.06 so it will become 0 0.84 kg into meter now next column is a couple next column is a couple so we know that the equation of general equation of couple is equal to m omega square r into l. But again, for the simplification of calculation, we consider couple in a m r n because we uh, here also we divide by a omega square. So couple divided by omega square. So general notation is m r n and unit is kg into meter square. Okay. So again, this is our centrifugal force. Now if we multiply the centrifugal force with a distance from RP, that means L, then we get our couple. So 1.2 into 0 0.05 but minus, so it will become minus 0 0.06. Similarly, 0 0.07 MB1 into 0, that means it becomes 0. Third one is 1.2 into 0 0.05, it, it will become 0 0.06. If we similarly calculate a couple, okay, same way. We can calculate this whole cup. Okay, so here in a table we have the value of centrifugal force and couple. Now let us calculate the balancing mass MB1 and MB2 by a graphical method. So first in a firstly we will calculate the centrifugal forces by a graphical method. So first, let us see a graphical method. Okay, then, then we will see a analytical method. Okay, so this is our plane position. This first step, angular position. It is a second step. Table contains table contains table contains forces and couple. It is our third step. Then fourth step is a couple polygon or a either couple polygon or a force polygon. Okay, so. We have to draw a force polygon, either force polygon or a couple polygon, which depends on 
a minimum number of unknown. So if we see the, the column of centrifugal force, then we can clearly see that there is a MV1 and MV2, there are two unknown. Okay, if we see the column of couple, then we can say that there is only MV1 is unknown. So first of all, we draw a couple polygon. Okay, if we draw a couple polygon, then we get MV1. Okay, after drawing a couple polygon, we will draw a force polygon. So to draw a couple polygon, we have to select some scale. We have to select some scale. So let us consider to select a scale, we have to consider two variables. One now we have data of centrifugal force and couple. So now we are going to draw a couple polygon and force polygon. So we have so now we have a data of centrifugal force and couple. And here we have represent the centrifugal force in centimeter and couple in a centimeter by selecting some suitable scale. And we have also the angular position of all masses. We know that here it is our plane A, it is plane B, plane C, and this is plane D. And here it is plane A and N. Now the, our A plane is a reference plane. Okay, so we have to draw either a force polygon or a couple force polygon is depends on a minimum number of unknown. Okay, so if we see a force polygon, then there are two unknown MB1 and MB2. And if we see a couple polygon, if we see a couple column, then there is only one unknown MB2. So MB2 is unknown as well as theta B2 is also unknown. Okay, so first of all we draw a couple polygon. Now we know that if the centrifugal force is acting in this direction, Fc, then always couple acting in a perpendicular direction to the centrifugal force. But when, if we rotate this couple to a 90 degree, then we can say that our couple is also acting in same direction of forces. So, in a couple polygon, we draw a vector of couple in the direction of force. Okay, so now let us draw. So let us consider a scale for a couple polygon. So here we select the maximum value is of couple is 0 0.221 and minimum value is 0 0.06. Okay, so we have to select a scale according to the minimum value and maximum value. So let us consider 0 0.005 kg into meter square is equal to 1 mm. That means 0 0.05 kg into meter square is equal to 1 centimeter. Now we can convert the value of this centrifuge, uh, value of this couple into centimeter. So 0 0.06 kg into meter square is equal to we know that if we divide this value by 0 0.005, then we get minus 1.2 centimeter. Okay. Same way we convert 0 0.06 in a centimeter is 1.2. Okay. So this is the value of couple in a centimeter. And these are the angular position of masses. So now let us draw a couple polygon. And from the couple polygon, we can calculate mv2. Okay, so first of all, first value is minus 1.2 centimeter. That means c1. Okay, so first value is minus 1.2 at 0 degree. So let, now let us draw a couple polygon. Okay, so this is our initial condition O. Okay, or reference point O. Now, minus 1.2, it is the magnitude of couple. So, we can represent couple by its magnitude and direction. So, minus 1.2 centimeter is its magnitude and direction is 0 degree. So, in a 0 degree, if we draw a line, this is our 0 degree. Okay, but the value is minus 1.2. So, we consider from in a towards the left direction and this line. Let us assume this line is having length is 1.2 centimeter. So this is our C1. Okay. So here we have to represent OA is a minus 0 0.06. Okay. Now second value, the second value of center, second value of couple is 0. Okay, so it is not required to represent a line of couple. Third value is 1.2, but at a 65 degree. 1.2 at a 65 degree. So this is a now we have to start from this point A, now 65 degree. So let us draw a line having length of 1.2 cm length. This is our AB line. This angle is 65 degree. Okay. And 
this is our C2. Now C2 is plus 1.5 degree. So this value is plus. So that's why we have considered in this direction. And this angle is 65 degree. Now third value. It is 4.42. 4.42 centimeter. The length of the C3 vector is a 4.42 centimeter. And at 145 degree. So again, from this B point, we have considered this is our reference. Okay. Now 160, 145 degree. So we consider, suppose if we measure this angle, we measure this angle and we have considered this is 145 degree and the length of this line is, this is BC and this vector is C3 vector and this BC is 4.42 cm. Again, the fourth value is unknown. Okay, fourth, fourth values, next values are known. So here it is nothing but it is 0 0.0133 MBD. This value is 0 0.0133 MB2. So it is unknown. So we cannot represent this a couple value in a vector form. So we represent this value 4.2 centimeter length. 4.2 centimeter length at 270 degree. At 270 degree. So again, from this point, we consider this is a reference point and we consider 4 cm length aligned this is our D and this is our C4 so CD this is our CD line so CD line represent 4.2 cm that means it is 0 0.21 kg into meter square ok so this is our CD line ok so we have now still our couple polygon is not a close ok so if we close this couple polygon so we close this couple polygon by using this noted line sorry ok so here our DO line is a closing side of couple polygon so DO line is a closing side of couple polygon so now our polygon is closed our couple polygon is closed, so we can say that there is a no unbalanced couple. Okay, so and this value, so this value 0 0.0133 MB2 must be equal to the DO line. Okay, now from this DO line, now we measure the DO line. If we measure DO line, then we will get if we measure this DO line, then we will get now. If we measure the DO line, then we get 4.3 cm. That means 43 m. Now this 43 mm line will represent this back radio. So we can represent, we can rewrite 0 0.1, 0 0.0, 133 MB2 is equal to 43 mm. Now we convert this 43 mm in a kg into meter square. We know that 1, 1 mm is equal to 0 0.05 kg into meter square. So here we write 0 0.005 kg into meter square. Okay, so we get 0 0.215. We get this value 0 0.215 kg into meter square. So we can get the value mb2 is equal to if we divide 0 0.215 divided by 0 0.0133 then write 0 0.215 divided by 0 0.0133 then we get the value mb2 is equal to 16.17 kg so this is our mb2 mass ok now another unknown it is theta b2 theta b2 so here from this reference if we measure this angle then this angle is our theta b2. We have calculated mb2 and theta b2. So now mb2 is known and theta b2 is also known. So if we, if, so there is a value is unknown 0 0.07 mb1 and here the value is 0 0.07 mb2. Now if we replace mb2 as a 0 as a 16.17 kg, then we get 1.1319. So after calculating mb2. If you put the value of mb2 here, then we get 1.1319. Now if we convert this value in a scale by using scale as 2.26. So here we have used for a force polygon, the scale is 0 0.05 
kg into meter is equal to 1 m. So okay, the minimum value of force is 1.2 and maximum value is 1.7. So according to the minimum and maximum value, we have select a scale 0.05 kg into meter is equal to 1 mm. Now let us draw a force polygon. So again, say in the same way, we have considered a reference. So this is our reference line, reference point O. From the O point B, we will start to draw a force polygon. Okay, so first I use 1.2. Okay, this is the magnitude of force and if we convert this magnitude in a centimeter then we get 2.4 centimeter. So vector having length is 2.4 centimeter and at a 0 degree. So we draw a line having length is 2.4 centimeter. So this is a line having length is 2.4 centimeter. So OA and length is 2.4 cm at 0 degree and we know that it is our Fc1 that means centrifugal force because of mass M1 ok now second value second value, second value is 0 0.07 mb2 now here mb2 is unknown so this value is unknown so now we cannot represent this value as a vector ok so we will have it third value is 1.2 so magnitude is, magnitude is 1.2 kg into meter. So if we convert this magnitude into a centimeter, then it will become 2.4 centimeter. Okay, so a line having length is 2.4 centimeter at 65 degrees. So from this reference point A, we will draw a line having length is also 65 degree. And this length is represent 1.2 centimeter, or we can say that Fc2, and this is our AB line. So AB represent 1.2 kg into meter. What we can say that it is 2.4 cm. Now third value is 1.7 kg into meter. Now if we convert this 1.7 in a centimeter, then it will become 3.4 cm. So 3.4 cm length. We draw a line having length is 3.4 cm at 145 degree. So again we consider our reference point will be B. Okay, and from this B point we will draw a line having length is 3.4 cm. So this is 3.4 cm, okay? This is BC and this angle, so we know that this angle is 65 degree and this angle will be, so we know that this angle is 145 degree. So here at a 145 degree angle from the B point, we draw a line BC having length is 3.4 cm. Now again we consider this is our reference C, okay? Next one is a 1.1319. This is our magnitude and if we convert in a scale then it will be 2.26 cm 2.26 cm at an angle 8 degree but 8 degree in clockwise direction 8 degree in clockwise direction ok and ok so 8 degree in clockwise direction or we can say that 358 degree 358 degree ok so if we draw this line, having length this two point, so this is our B point, and this this angle is eight degree, or this angle will be three fifty two degree, and this CD line is equivalent to the two point two six centimeter. Now, next one is zero point eighty four. This is our magnitude. And if you convert this magnitude into centimeter, then it will be a 1.68 centimeter. And it is a at it is at 270 degrees. So if we draw a line having length is 2, okay. So this is our line. Suppose we consider this is our E point. So this angle is 270 degree. Okay, so DO line represent 1.68 1.68 centimeter. Okay. Now, still our polygon is unclosed. So, if we close the polygon by joining this line EO, so EO represents the 0 0.07 MB1 because now our polygon is closed, so we can say that our system is dynamically balanced. So, here we measure the EO line. If we measure the EO line, then we will get it is equivalent to the if we measure EO line then we get 42 mm or we can say that 
4.2 centimeter. If you measure this line, you will then we get 42 mm. If you convert, we know that 1 mm is equal to 0 0.05 kg into meter. Then we get if we multiply 42 into 0 0.05, then we get 2.1 kg into meter. Now we know that this QO line represents this value 0.07 mv1. So mv1 we get mv1 is equal to if we divide 2.7, 2. If we so here 0.07 mv1 is equal to 2.1 kg into meter. Now we will divide 2.1 by 0.07. So we get around 30 kg. So we get mv1 is 30 kg. And if we measure this angle, if we measure this angle, then it is our theta v1. And we get theta v1. You, you have a clear idea about this example. Okay, so this is an example of balancing of rotating masses in a different way.